Welcome to lesson 10 of the Arabic course. In this lesson, we will go into exercise 8. And exercise 8 is mainly about learning um, other numbers than the singular. So we have both the dual and the plural. See, in Arabic, when you have two of something, you can use the dual, the dual uh, number, which has uh, separate endings. Um, as for the plural, well, Arabic is particularly um, uh, different from European languages, at least. Uh, I'm referring to European languages because those are the languages that I that I know, at least apart from uh, apart from. Uh, Semitic languages. So, European languages, uh, compared to those, Arabic has a, a, a special thing in that it many, many, actually most of its plurals are indicated not by an ending, but by a different form. We call them broken plurals, and that's the subject of the next exercise. But for now, we will see that some of the plurals in Arabic are um, well, what we call sane plurals, or plurals that are indicated by a, either feminine ending or a masculine ending. Um so we'll be looking at some of these different endings in this uh, in this exercise. Now, please look at sentence one. Sentence one reads like this Hal il Khabezu Raniyun Is the baker rich? Again the Hel particle asks a question where you expect a negative answer and so you in English, can say can can add the, the word really. Is the baker really rich? That's the way in English to indicate. I mean, indicating really using really means that you think that uh, the answer should be no. Now, let's just first look at the the little kasra in connection with the the first word heli. Now, usually the Interrogative particle is hel, not e, not heli. So what does the e do there? Well, the e is a so-called auxiliary, auxiliary vowel, and that means that it helps the pronunciation. Such vowels are necessary in Arabic when you have a consonant cluster at the start of the following word. What is a consonant cluster? Well, that's simply two consonants that are. are uh, cl that, that clash that, that are together. So the following word starts with the uh, with a definite article, and then a gem. Now, in the definite article in uh, in fluent speech or, or rather in fluent writing, the e, eh, the the hamza or alif of the definite uh, of, of the of the article is is not pronounced. So you have simply the l. In this case, it's followed by a l khabezu. So this word starts with a lam and then a ch, two consonants. That's a consonant cluster in Arabic. And if and um, if we did not have the i after the first word hel, you'd have hel l khabezu, three consonants in a row, lam, lam, khaf, uh, khaf, and that is not allowed. So you add an auxiliary vowel, and this type of vowel can sometimes be confusing when you read uh, Arabic. Uh, so we'll see some examples of that later. Um, yeah. So, is the baker rich? This is uh, nothing new in uh, comparison with the grammar that we've seen so far. Hal al khabezu raniyun. Again, the adjective is used in a in a predicative sense. Is the baker rich? Rich raniyun is predicate. We're not talking about the rich baker. That would be al khabezu. Al-Raniyu, the rich baker. That would be the adjective used as as an attribute, but here as a predicate. Now, going on, le huwa faqirun. No, he is poor. Huwa faqirun. Faqir means poor. Incidentally, that's the same word as uh, faqir. Uh, faqir, faqir, faqir. In uh, is uh, as you have in English uh, in uh, in in uh, Indian um, in India you have the fakirs that um, you know people who um, 
who uh, do amazing things, you know, st stand with their arm in the air for several years at row, or or, or uh, lie on a, on a bed of nails and so on. Same word. Uh, incidentally, that word is um, can can be uh, can be used to um, clarify the the stress. Maybe you remember that the stress in Arabic is on the third to last syllable, if there is such a one in the word, unless the next to last syllable, the penultimate penultimate syllable, is long. And in this case, the penultimate syllable is long, right? Fakirun. Note that the e there is a long e. Fakirun. <laughs> and um, hence, it's not fa faqirun, but faqirun. Stress on the penultimate syllable when the penultimate syllable is long. Okay, so far so good. Now, sentence three, we get to some plurals. Again, the same plurals, which in the masculine nominative, um, when it's not uh, when it's not in the construct state, we call the the non construct state, the non genitive connection state. We call it the absolute state. Um, and we can we can uh, divide that into the into the uh, definite state and the indefinite state. But in any case, in the definite or indefinite state, we have the ending una. So, chabezu or chabezun is a baker. So, bakers are chabezuna in the nominative uh, case. El chabezuna when najaruna it means the bakers and the carpenters are busy. Al Khabazuna, when Najaruna, Mashruluna. The bakers and the carpenters are busy. So again, we have um, the final adjective there, Mashruluna, is um, functions as predicate in this sentence. And you can see that by the absence of the definite article, as we've seen several times. The adjective, however, in this case uh, is uh, congruent also. I mean, you see it shows congruence, congruency, both by, by the same being in the same case, una, masculine case, uh, sorry, a nominative case, and also being in the masculine plural, just like the nouns, the carpenters, sorry, the bakers and the carpenters. Now, in this same plural type of um, a word, the we only have two forms for the three cases: the adjective, sorry, the the accusative case and the genitive case. In other words, um, are the same. They look the same. You can see by the context which which one it is. But they look the same, and that's uh, that ending is ina, chabazina. Uh, would be the either bakers as a, as object or as genitive. Chabazina, accusative or genitive, but chabazuna, nominative. Good. Now in sentence four, we see the dual, dual ending, meaning that there's two of them. Sentence four reads like this. Al Ainani Wal Udunani Firasi. It means the eyes and the ears are in the head. So true. Now it's natural to refer to eyes or think of eyes and ears, of course, in the dual, since they come in pairs for most people. And the, so it is. You see the ending any. That ending is the dual ending, the dual masculine ending in the nominative. And when, again, when it's not in the construct state, so when it's in the indefinite state or the definite state. If we go on, we see sentence five. Al waladani la ebani. 
So in this case, walidani, the any ending again is nominative dual, so it means there's two. Walad means boy. Waladani means two boys. The two boys are playing. La ibani. The adjective playing is then used as a predicative, as a yeah, uh, uh, the predicative use. As a, it's uh, the predicate here. The two boys are playing, and uh, we have the congruency indicated by the uh, any ending also also on the adjective. The two boys are two playing, or whatever you want to say. Now, in the following sentence, we have the feminine version, which is simple. It simply adds the te of the feminine. Binteni la ibateni. Two girls are playing. Binteni la ibateni. So the here we have the teni ending for the feminine. Now, for the for this for for the duals and for this type of plurals, the the genitive construction um, form is different from the uh, indefinite and definite forms. Now we call it we we we, we call it uh, states. So the indefinite state, the definite state, and the construct state. The construct state is what we call the first word or words in a genitive construction. So, for instance, in sentence seven. We have yada el waladi wasikhatani. Yada el waladi wasikhatani. The hands of the kid or the boy are are um, uh, dirty. Now, yad yadun is hand. It's a feminine word, which we can see by the adjective wasikhatani. Atani being the feminine dual ending. Yada is another. Um, item that comes in pairs, usually uh, therefore re referred to in the dual. And in the in the nominative here, you would expect yadani if you uh, if you only have the you know the um, uh, definite state or the indefinite state. But here we have the construct state. This means that. It's the boy's hands. We have a construct chain, a genitive construction. And the hands then are in the construct state. And that removes the ni. Yadani would be hands, two hands. But yada is the, these same two hands, but just in the construct state, meaning in the genitive construction. But the final word is again expressing congru congruency both in the gender number and uh, case wasikhatani um, any or sorry atani is feminine dual nominative just as hands is feminine dual and nominative um, except that it's in the construct state yeah okay so you should now be able to have a go at um, these sentences which uh, you should uh, then translate as usual and uh, translate also into Arabic the four um, sentences at the bottom of this um, page, this PDF. Okay, that was lesson 10 and uh, thank you.